Yo, what's up guys, Rose at Production here and welcome back to another music video behind the scenes. So today I'm working with recording artist Pimpton. We've been working together now for quite some time filming our first music video together in 2017. Pimpton gave me a treatment outline for what he was looking for for this music video and truly did take creative direction on set while I brought his vision to reality with a mixture of lighting and technical camera knowledge. The gear used on set really wasn't anything crazy. The camera I used for this music video was a $1500 camera body which is the Canon R7. Lenses used were the 35mm f1.4 and Tokina 11-20mm wide angle lens, both lenses being Canon EF mount. I use a DJI Ronin RS2 gimbal for two shots, a tripod, aperture 300D2, aperture P60C panel light which is full RGB spectrum, and a SD80S studio light, as well as prism lens FX kaleidoscope filter and a Dream FX filter. Okay, so scene number one here, we have a handheld performance scene shot in 4K 24fps at 1 over 50 shutter speed. So I could have used autofocus, but because the artist's hand movements randomly move towards his face, this can cause autofocus hunting. So I actually just chose to be on the safe side and shoot in manual focus for this scene specifically. All right guys, so we are gonna be setting up a performance scene here with a tripod. In my opinion, tripods are pretty underutilized by a lot of people. I mean, music videos especially. People think that, you know, handheld shots and gimbal shots are like the go-to and the end-all be-all, but tripod shots for performance scenes are pretty sweet. We're about to do a little side profile shot of Pimpton. We'll be shooting him from the side, he's gonna be looking straight ahead. And what I'm doing is just keying him with the Aperture 300D2 and I actually have it set at maybe like 8% and I'm purposely underexposing the image because we have this black curtain in the background and you can see on the curtain that there's a lot of like wrinkles and stuff. When we go into post and we actually start to edit this up, we're gonna be able to just crush the shadows and you're not even gonna be able to see, like it's gonna look like he's in like a bit of a spotlight or like some moonlight. So we're shooting in 4K fine, so if I need to crop in, I can. And we're gonna run a little performance scene from very beginning to very end. I do that for every single music video. I tell the artist, I'm like, yo, just sing it from beginning to end. Sometimes it sucks because we do, you know, a lot of performance scenes in one music video shoot, but it gives us more footage to play around with in post. So we're gonna run this from beginning to end right now. Just off a Bluetooth speaker, super simple JBL Bluetooth speaker. Got the autofocus turned on on the R7. Keep everything in focus and press record. Run the song back, we're good to go. Any eye contact with camera? If you want, if you want. You can kind of just like look over a bit, acknowledge it, and then go back. All right, so next performance scene we got here, another tripod shot, this time Pimpton's gonna be looking straight face into the camera and no movement, so no body movement, nothing. And I actually shifted the Aperture 300D um, to his right side and it's just hitting him directly from the side, but I kind of angled it a little past his shoulder. So it's kind of hitting him from like the back side a little bit, but still lighting up his face. And with the Aperture Light Dome 2, we're getting a really nice fall off onto the opposite side of his face. So it's kind of like a darker scene, I'd say. Um, I really like like the emotionless like face shots. You see this a lot in like Cole Bennett videos. He loves doing those types of shots. I think it looks super hard, so um, we're gonna shoot that and uh, I'm gonna lay over all the clips right now. Okay. So we just shifted the light maybe a few feet over. Pimpton again is just gonna be facing forward and all I did is literally just shift the tripod angle. So we've gotten a few tripod shots now and that's like three separate performance scenes plus we had the handheld performance scene and then we're gonna get a couple more handheld performance scenes um, in this same area. Same type of vibe, just getting those really smooth type of shots. This is more of like a laid back song, so we're not going for like the really crazy um, non-Ibis type of handheld shots, trying to keep it really chill, really smooth and clean. Um, so we're just gonna run back and one more tripod shot here at this location and I'm shooting on the shadowed side of his face. So typically you want to be shooting on the shadowed side, even for like corporate interviews, you wanna be shooting on the shadowed side. Same thing goes for music videos. It just looks a lot more, I guess, cinematic. I hate using the term cinematic, but it looks really, really nice. And you can see that fall off on the side of his face. Pendra's gonna sing the song again from very beginning to very end. Get that question a lot in the comments. Always run your performance scenes from beginning to end. So we're gonna press play and I'll roll over some of the footage. Cause I cannot let it go Come back like seasonals I own 
on the business, bro. All right, so next performance scene here, shooting in manual focus because I'm gonna be doing a very consistent shot. So like when we are trying to milk an environment and just get as much footage as possible in one setting, I usually stick to one consistent movement for an entire performance scene from beginning to end because if I wanna change that shot type or that handheld movement, I'll just do that in the next performance scene. So like the first performance scene I did handheld, I was just kind of pushing in, doing a little like Dutch angles here and there. This one, I'm gonna be really rolling the camera with the in-body image stabilization turned on and it's gonna be this consistent motion just going in and out on Pimpton's face here. It's gonna look really sick. So we're gonna run back, playback, and um, get this next performance scene. Alright guys, so we are gonna be actually switching our key light to the JVM SD80S. So these just recently came out. They're a bicolor light. They're super, super affordable. I mean, for what, less than $300, you're getting a fully bicolor light, which means that you can adjust the white balance on here, the Kelvin settings. So you can go all the way from, what is it, 2700 all the way up to, I'm assuming, 7500. Yep, yeah, 7500. So get a wide range of bicolor light there, which is really nice. We're going to set this to 5500 Kelvin. That's what we're going to set our camera to as well. And this is actually fairly bright. Now, JVM also sent me um, their small light box here. A little bit of a process to set it up. It was a little confusing at first until I watched a video online really quick and then it all made sense. I would recommend just because of how small this thing is to literally just leave it pre-set up. And this also does come with an egg crate on the front too. So what this does is it basically removes light spill. So if I take this off, the light will literally spill all over the place, all over a background. If I place it on, it's gonna keep the light like more on the subject and it's not gonna spill behind the subject as much So I like to have these especially for shooting like darker scenes just because I can really just focus that light on the subject It's sweet that it actually does come with an egg crate uh, Most soft boxes do and this thing's like pretty small like we're gonna rig this up here See how soft it is usually the bigger the soft box the softer the light So this is pretty small. We're gonna see how it looks. We're gonna run a couple scenes with it I think it's gonna be perfectly fine. Yeah, I kind of like it. I mean, it's tiny. It's a little studio light. I don't mind it actually. And it has built in effects here as well. So we might actually utilize those um, in some later on scenes too. We got an LCD screen so you can see the percentage. And then obviously the white balance or the Kelvin. And then shows the battery life as well. So on the back side here, two of their MPF style batteries. So you can power this. I'm not plugging this into the wall right now. We're gonna see how long that we, these things last. I think they're gonna last at least like an hour and a half, two hours before we have to actually plug it in. So I'm gonna just leave it on just for the hell of it and see how long these batteries actually last on this light. All right guys, so next scene, we do a little performance scene. Um, I'm gonna be sitting on the ground looking directly up at Pimpton and our extra. And I have the aperture 300D2 just off to the side but I pushed it back by probably like, I don't know, a solid six or seven feet. And the further your light box is from your subjects, the more of a light um, like drop off you're gonna have on the shadows on their faces. So I have it off to the side and it's gonna be just a softer drop off or fall off on the subject's face, the further back it is. When you have it really close to your subject, it's gonna be a very harsh drop off. And then we are gonna actually use on our shadowed side, again, we're shooting on the shadowed side of the subjects, the SD-ADS just slightly strobing the subject's face on the shadowed side just to add like a little bit of a keyed element or a key light element onto that side while I'm shooting so I'm literally gonna be handheld on the ground and I'm just gonna be giving it just like the camera a little bit of handheld motion nothing crazy and we're gonna see how it looks so um, I like the shots where I'm looking up at artists I think it makes them look higher than life that's kind of like the psychology around looking up at somebody with the camera so yeah we're gonna try this out and see how it looks Still can don't make those you're blowing off top. Diamonds on everything. My diamonds to dead the before I show you a very simple yet effective gimbal technique for music videos, I want to mention that everything I teach you in this video plus so much more, I actually deep dive into all areas of music videos in my Learn Freelance Filmmaking online music video course. Priced at just $99, you get over 130 music video lessons ranging from camera setting basics, pre-production, camera operating, editing breakdowns from start to finish in Final Cut Pro 10, Premiere Pro, and so much more. This is the most in-depth music video course on the internet today, specifically made for freelancers. 
If you want to take your music video game 10 steps further, see real results, and jump the learning curve, click the first link you see in the description down below to learn more. Okay, so for this scene, I'm using the DJI Ronin RS2 with a Tokina 11 to 20 millimeter wide angle lens, filming at a focal length of 11 millimeters, so pretty wide. I love shooting hallway scenes at a super wide angle. You'll see hallway scenes with depth in the background, even in big budget music videos, where the director wants to show what is going on in the background. The Ian Dior Sick and Tired music video is a perfect example of a hallway shot in a wide angle focal length. If this shot was filmed with a tighter focal length, it just wouldn't do the environment justice. Not to mention, you also see in this music video that when they push in and out on Ian Dior, the Steadicam is rotating 30 to 40 degrees to the left and right. You can achieve a similar shot with most newer gimbals on the market by simply placing the gimbal in FPV mode or similar. As you can see here, when I'm flying the gimbal, I'm rotating the gimbal in and out very slowly as I push in and out from the artist. And if twin cores blow up, you know pink got them packs in. Light up in pre-roll fashion. Mama go hit our trip back in. All right, so we're doing a little bit of a two-point lighting setup here. So I have the JVM light boomed actually over top of Pimpton while he's doing his performance scenes. We have the two extras in the background that are holding a pose. And basically all I'm doing is I just have the Ronin RS2 and I'm literally just very, very slowly semi-circling around Pimpton. And I directed him to have his eyes tracking the lens as I'm moving and semi-circling around him. This isn't like a crazy fast movement with the gimbal. It's just very, very slow shooting at 4K 24 FPS. And we're hitting um, this like everybody in the frame with a little bit of like a pink purplish light and that's kind of like the fill light I guess or just filling in half of the face because what this overhead lighting setup is doing is basically just casting a shadow casting owl eyes on them It's a very like emotional looking shot. This is something that I don't usually do It's something that you want to kind of use sparingly It's the only time we're gonna use this for this entire music video just something to kind of sprinkle in one other thing I want to mention too is that um, I'd say about 90% of the shots that we've shot today have been in this corner So we're literally just cheating the angles or getting angles looking up at the artist looking down on them using a gimbal And really the only other shot that we got here was in the hallway And then we're gonna grab a shot in one of the tattoo rooms so We're gonna get onto the last scene here and then we're going to location number two So the next location we are using again the Tokina 11 to 20 millimeter wide angle lens and filming both scenes in 60 fps at 1 over 125 shutter speed both of these scenes will be performance scenes here we're capturing a lot of handheld shots as well as a unique shot where i actually twist the camera body 90 degrees when the artist finishes certain lines of the song as you can see here the only light we used was the gvm sd80s light and set the kelvin temperature to 3500 to warm the room up I placed it above all of the subject's heads, pointed the light down on a 45 degree angle, and removed the egg crate so the light spills all over the place and evenly lights the subjects in frame. For how small this SD80S is, I was very impressed by the light output. If you're interested in this budget yet super capable light, I left a link to it in the description down below. All right guys, so I forgot to vlog the last shot that we did, but basically we laid over a mirror on top of this ottoman and basically I just set up a tripod shot on the 35 mil f1.4. I shot it f1.4 and 4K 60 FPS. And I literally just let the tripod do all the work. We had an extra just doing a bunch of movements on the ottoman. We had a mirror set down. It looked really, really cool. And all I did was use an Amran P60C panel light. I tossed a grid on there so the light didn't spill all over the place because we wanted to have that spotlight moonlight shot. So we had the Amran P60 CC probably about six feet above the subject pointing directly down on her and I had it set to maybe like 10% We just wanted to catch like a lot of shadows on her back um, While she was doing a bunch of different movements about halfway through uh, Maybe two minutes of grabbing that footage when we felt we had enough I actually tossed a prism lens FX kaleidoscope filter on the 35 mil and I just used a little step up ring here and all I did was literally just on the tripod I was just moving the kaleidoscope really really slowly I was doing sometimes some like really jerky motions and it looked like beautiful like unbelievable once we did that I actually stood up on a chair and I grabbed a shot looking directly down on the subject um, I did some without the kaleidoscope and then with the kaleidoscope filter so um, those shots turned out really really sweet and honestly guys it was super simple this is a shot that you guys can pull off literally just cut all the lights shoot in the dark and your key light the only light you're using is just a panel light whether it's a 
panel or like a really small light with like a soft filter. You have to have some sort of soft filter with a grid to pull that off so the light doesn't spill all over the place. That's the reason why we use egg crates on our or grids on our lights is just so the light doesn't spill all over the place. So the second shot that we're going to be grabbing is I actually have a the Amaran P60C panel light and it's actually tilted upside down on a C stand and it's pointing directly at this ottoman and we're going to have some extras just doing a bunch of different poses and movements on the ottoman and we're actually backlighting them and on the P60C panel these things are awesome they cost like maybe 200 bucks each and they're full RGB spectrum by color as well as have like I think 10 or 15 different effects built into them strobe effects and whatnot so we have it on the party mode it's called so it's just um, slowly changing colors while the subjects and talent are going to be doing different movements on the ottoman and I'm literally just going to grab tripod shots again I'm going to have it in the exact same location as the first shot and all I'm going to do is grab the shots without the kaleidoscope and then toss the kaleidoscope on there, grab some more shots with it. Um, I think that these are going to be like staple skeleton shots for this music video and it's so simple. I mean for the silhouette shots, I am going to turn up the um, P60C panel light that is casting that silhouette on the back of the subjects and I'm going to kill this key light. So there's going to be no key light and all you're going to see is that silhouette of the models. It's going to look so, so good. All right, so we're gonna grab one more performance scene here for this location. It's the second last scene of the night. We're kind of using like a poor man's bird's eye view <laughs> set up here. So I got a C stand with my Canon R7 just on the end of it. And obviously standing on a chair so I can adjust the manual focus here. So we're not gonna use autofocus because it's a little dark. So we're gonna shoot this in 4K 60. So we have the option to slow-mo any of these clips. I'm gonna kind of direct pimp into occasionally look up at the camera and acknowledge it and the camera is literally looking directly down on him the lens we're using is the 11 to 20 tokina and then i put the prism lens fx dream filter on there so it's going to kind of look a little like glowy um, which is kind of cool so um, we're punched all the way out at 11 mils so super wide angle lens and um yeah, we'll see how this goes. I think it's gonna be super dope. That ass clap got my chain jangling with some jumping on that ass like a caddy. Try my back it up if you ask me. All my haters stay mad because I'm happy. Bitch, get off my sack, I ain't hacky. Got a blunt full of beans, bitch, I'm gassy. Yeah. Diamonds and gold, I need that off top. Bitch, better have my money off top. And that's a wrap for this music video. So going into this music video, the artist Pimpton had sent me a treatment that he wanted to follow. And between his vision for the music video and me applying what I know on the technical side of video to even cheating upwards of 10 scenes in one corner of a room, we pulled off a really clean looking music video. If you guys want an extremely in-depth, underrated music video gimbal tutorial where I teach you seven different gimbal movements specifically for music video filmmaking, be sure to check out this video next. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.